and gentlemen, tonight on the Big Brother Mitchie Show, I have many things to show you. Feeling lonely, sugar? I'm always feeling lonely. I want to, uh, yes, you're a very pretty young lady. Uh, are you here to be on the Horror Show? Oh, horror. Hello and welcome to the Big Brother and Nitsy Show. I have always had an interest in spooky things, man. Tonight is our horror show. You know, people have liked being scared and horrified for a long time. In fact, all throughout history, there have been storytellers that could gather a crowd of people and make them sit down and listen to many types of tales. But I'll bet the stories that a lot of people enjoyed were the scary stories involving horrible creatures and man-eating monsters and blood-sucking vampires. The first scary tale that I enjoyed was Dracula. I have always thought vampires were very, very interesting. And to my taste, I find the females very, very, very sexy. Other monsters. Like the werewolf scared the hell out of me, man. Even in my dreams, I would find them chasing me. And as they were running, instead of getting away from them, I would be stuck in the mud, feeling their breath right behind my neck. And they would be scaring the hell out of me. I love that stuff. Because if they didn't scare me, I wouldn't make them scare me in my dream. Of all the monsters that I enjoyed, I think Frankenstein was my favorite. He was a man that was just misunderstood, man. I think in Frankenstein's mind, he wanted to be loved by a beautiful woman. And if he couldn't be loved by her, he would come to her house and he would make her love him. Maybe Frank and Ditchy shared a kind of family history. Tonight is all about the horror. You will see some very funny things on this show and you will also see a couple of scary things as well. So stick with us, sit back and enjoy the horror show. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this week's episode of Monster Matchup. The show where you, the audience, gets to vote on which of these three monsters this lovely lady will accompany on a romantic evening. Tonight's contestant's name is Miranda. Miranda, could you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure, my name is Miranda and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri and I like long walks on the beach and the rain and world peace. World peace? Yeah. Okay. Well, as you all know, Miranda will be asking our three monster contestants a series of questions designed to get into their inner beauty. We will actually be probing inside and figuring out what makes each one tick and hopefully you, the audience, will be able to pick a suitable companion for Miranda. Miranda, are you ready to go? I'm ready. Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. All right then, well, when we come back I'll be introducing you, the audience, to each one of the monsters, and then we will get on with the rest of the evening. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce contestant number one. Contestant number one, tell the audience who you are, a little bit about yourself. Oh, I'm the wolf man, Jack, and I'm always ready. Ready for anything. Oh. Heal. Sit. And here we have contestant number two. Um, Frank, I think his name is. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, there you have it. And finally, contestant number three. Contestant number three, tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. My name is Spectra. I make a living sucking the blood out of people's bodies. Seriously? Most definitely. Well then, now that you've met all three contestants, let's move on to the game. Bachelor number one, if I was your girlfriend, what would be your pet name for me? I'd call you Moonbeam. Bachelor number two, if I was your girlfriend, what would be your pet name for me? Mm -hmm. 
Bachelor number three. If I was your girlfriend, what would be your pet name for me? I would call you Pussy Widow. Bachelor number three. If you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be and why? I would be a famous grasshopper that would hop on your leg and hump you until you're dead. Bachelor number two. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate yourself in the kissing department? Bachelor number two, pretend you're meeting my mother. What's the first thing you say? <laughs> Bachelor number three, if you were a kitchen appliance, what kind of kitchen appliance would you be and why? Well, my dear, I would be a steak knife because I would cut you in half and then I would eat you one part in the morning and then the other part at night time when everyone was sleeping. Bachelor number two, if you were a kitchen appliance, what kind of kitchen appliance would you be and why? Bachelor number one, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate yourself in the kissing department? Oh baby, I'm a number ten, cause I'm gonna make you just so happy. Not you. Bachelor number one, let's say I've prepared a romantic dinner for you, but the food is absolutely terrible. How would you react? Milty. Bachelor number two, if I had a really bad day, how would you try to cheer me up? Boom shakalaka, boom shakalaka. It's a tie! The first time ever on Monster Matchup! That means, Miranda, you get to go out with all three monsters on a romantic date. How does that sound? That sounds great! Yeah! What do you guys think? Hey, Dracula, this don't be hook of ours. I'm gonna talk Stay tuned throughout the show for, for scenes from their dates. <laughs> spiders and flies, master. Must I eat but spiders and flies? Yeah, it's really a shame how Frank and I split up. It's been difficult. I've been trying to get my life back together. I won't lie, it's a process, you know, ever since the big D. But I'm, I'm getting it back together. You know, I went through a crazy period at first where I went kind of wild, changed my hair, got rid of that stupid white stripe, and did some online dating. You know, people really freak out about the complexion issues, but. But no, I'm definitely getting better. I say, I'd say I was, I'm getting things together. I, I'm going to counseling now, and I, that's helping. That's helping. It's, you know, it's just difficult. I mean, you know, we first get into a relationship with somebody like Frank, and you just think everything's marvelous. You know, you just love everything about him the black lips, flat head, you know, the grunts, you know. But uh, it just didn't last. It just, it's just gone, just like that. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what happened between Frank and I, and 
And you know, people pushed us together. They really did, you know. I mean, everybody thought, oh yeah, we have so much in common. You know, here you got two people that are both sewn out of body parts by some crazy madman, you know. <laughs> you don't see people like that walking down the street every day. So everyone just assumed that it was perfect. But it wasn't perfect at all. No. I mean, what can they expect? It's not like I had a model childhood. <laughs> I didn't have a childhood at all. But it wasn't just me. I'll tell you what, it wasn't just me. No, Frank, he's got a temper. I'll tell you what, and no sense of humor, none. And those bolts on the side of his neck. You go to hug the guy, you get metal scrapes on your cheek. You know, that's such a turn off. So it wasn't just me. But I, I'm getting it back together, I really am. Things are getting better. But I, I think the problem really started when that, that angry mob of people came to our house. Torches. Started throwing torches into the house. You know, I just, I just want people to like me. I just, I want to fit into the community. I want to play bunko with the other wives. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Hmm. Hey, Doc, what's going on? Yeah, I'm, uh, mind? Rough day at work today. I'm telling you. I get blamed for everything anymore. Two of the new mob guys, I'm telling you, right off the edge of the bridge today. It was unbelievable. Of course, who'd they blame for that? Frankie. Yeah, I said I was moving too slow and the mob crowded up on the but right off the edge. But enough of work. Um, mind if I drink? Smoke, drink, yeah. Hard day. Now I have nobody nagging me. I can do this stuff. I'm actually doing good since you left. Uh, it's whole new me. Got the house to myself. Can lay around in my underwear and scratch, if you know what I mean. You know, uh, so um, it's nice to have that 90 pound, I mean, 190 pound weight off my back. Nag, nag, nag. You know, and she used to complain all the time about uh, me having a temper. Well, you go to work all day and, and uh, have them walk around, stereotyped your whole life. You come home, you want to let go, you want to let down a little bit. You don't want the woman, little woman nagging you all day long. So, uh, I don't know if you had a temper, but, uh, okay, maybe I do. But, uh, you know, I think another thing used to set her off all the time, too, is when I bring home work with me. You know, guys just want to come over, have a few beers in the backyard, we could barbecue. No, she didn't want the torch smoke in the house. And, you know, she complained there was too many good looking women in the mob. Hey, I can't help but that, you know, like the, uh, th this is the, the era of uh, equal rights opportunity and all that stuff. I don't do the hiring. But, uh, yeah, things are going good. Um, something I don't understand, though is uh, why did I ask her all those years to change her hairstyle, fix herself up a little bit so we could go out on the town and I wouldn't be embarrassed for being seen in the same thing all the time. No, she couldn't do that, could she? So same thing all the time. Big stupid pointy hair dude, white skunk stripe. What's up with that? That wasn't even cool in our era. Yeah, but now she's out and single and doing the flame thing yeah, I'm starting to wonder about Renfield, too, you know. Those two spent a lot of time together. Squish that little bug. If he wasn't a friend of Doc's, I'd do it. But anyway, yeah, now she's got the new hairstyle, and she's got the whole new look. Whatever, I'm over her anyway. But uh, she's got me to thank for those legs, though. I picked those out. But anyway, so... Um, if you don't mind, Doc, we're going to cut this short. I met a new gal the other day. She's one of the mob directors, and uh, she's kind of cute. And she actually paid attention to me and, and spoke to me like a human, or humans. Hmm. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to get out of here, Doc. Cheers. I'm hitting the road. You have a good one. See ya.
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on the Big Brother Energy Show, I got a fantastic St. Louis band coming up for you. The band is called the Sunset Theory. Itchy finds all the most spectacular bands in the St. Louis area, and I found another one. These guys are coming up with a brand new video, the Itchy, and the show produced for them, and we're going to put that on right after we get done talking to them, and I want you to meet the Sunset Theory. The lead singer's name is Chris, and I want Chris to tell me something about the band. How you doing, Chris? And welcome to the Big Brother Itchy Show. Thanks, Itchy. I'm Chris. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the Sunset Theory. You're well. freaking out a little bit, aren't you? I'm a little nervous. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, brother. Anyway, this is Doug, Brandon, Jeremy, Nick, and I'm Chris, and we're the Sunset Theory. Check us out on MySpace, www.myspace.com. Come out and check out some songs. Check out Reach for Tomorrow. That's our video. Reach for Tomorrow is the name of that video. We did this video for them. It's a fantastic looking video. If you don't watch this video, I'll come to your house and I'll make you watch the video. Anyway. The Sunset Theory is here in the Big Brother in Show. Show. Love them. And we want them to drink maybe a little bit of wine for us, with us. And we, it's, it's an Italian thing. You know, I, I like to welcome you to the show. And uh, tonight, I would like you to drink with Itchy. Is that good for you? Oh, oh sure. pretty good. Yeah. Hey, Itchy, by the way, you know, we're going to be playing at uh, Cruising Route 66 on October 19th. So, FYI. just thought you should know. And Itchy would care because... Well, uh, come might come out to Alan near you. Yeah. Like you know, some people like to advertise, but you know, I, I can understand you, Nick. You advertise this. It's, it's okay. You, you do it on the Big Brother Ninja Show. Use it. We have tens and tens of people watching our show, and it's okay. So anyway, I want to salute the Sunset Theory and Hello. welcome them Thank to you. the Big Brother Ninja Show. He's trying to get in our pants, ladies and gentlemen. Wine. Oh, I've got a scary one behind me. <laughs> it's just wild. And anyway, it's people. <laughs> I know, it's your ass. It, it, I understand why you say that. It's, oh. it's your ass. <laughs> I don't understand why the Shiraz could be that bad. It was, I, I hate it too, but it's not that bad. I like Merlot. Itchy likes Merlot. I like Merlot and Spaghetti. It's Nick. What, what are you doing? Are you stealing all the band's wallets in the... Okay, anyway. Sunset Theory is coming up. Please watch the video. If you don't, you know what will happen.
ladies and gentlemen. Let's tune in on Miranda's first date with Dracula. It is, of course, at one of the finest restaurants in the area, The Bill, footed by Monster Matchup. Let's tune in. Well, what do not like? Perhaps a drink of water. Here's a girl. Yeah, it's a wonderful vintage. And I think I'm gonna love it. That is good. Thank it's you. It's wonderful, is it not? Mm. Have you seen Batman? you decided to come out on this date with me tonight and I brought you to my favorite place to look at the world. It's really beautiful. I think you're really beautiful. Thanks. Oh, oh, you animal! Oh. Riding hood, I pray bleeding too. 
Overcome the peace that lies inside When the moon is full and shining bright Dark shadowy creatures fill the night I will stick close right by your side You should never fear my bark But best be aware of the wolfman's bite Wolfman's bite Wolfman's bite Wolfman's bite